Before the Freedom of Information Act existed, there was no legal framework for corporate assets, the people, to have the right to a seriously limited access to public information. There was, however, the lawful right for British citizens to make any request of the public civil system they paid for and receive a written answer. So who does the Freedom of Information legal framework operate for? Under the British lawful constitutional system, the civil service had no protection when faced with requests from the taxpaying public, especially when the free press got hold of it. This situation would not do for the corporate domain as they risked exposure as they captured the state offices. Should the British public, of course, assume the responsibility of British citizenship and make requests? Enter the Freedom of Information Act 2000. This is what it has to say. The Freedom of Information Act 2000 is an Act of Parliament of the Parliament of the United Kingdom that creates a public right of access to information held by public authorities. It is the implementation of Freedom of Information legislation in the United Kingdom on a national level. The Act implements a manifesto commitment of the Labour Party in the 1997 general election developed by Dr David Clark as a 1997 white paper. The final version of the Act is believed to have been diluted from that proposed while Labour was in opposition. The full provisions of the Act came into force on the 1st of January 2005. The Act is the responsibility of the Lord Chancellor's Department, now renamed the Ministry of Justice. The Act led to the renaming of the Data Protection Commissioner, set up to administer the Data Protection Act, who is now known as the Information Commissioner. The Office of the Information Commissioner oversees the operation of the Act. What this means is access to public information is no longer governed by the constitutional offices. It is now governed by the corporate offices, namely the Ministry of Justice and the Information Commissioner's Office. This corporate system was set up by the one and only Mr. Tony Blair, also known as... Tonius Belerius Cheshus Catus, from the animal category Smilus Hides Lysus. This, in and of itself, should have all alarm bells sounding. So how does this situation pan out in real time, outside the twisted Jack and Ori script called Politics 2011 United Kingdom? The 2004 Contingency Act is the script to form a corporate civil government. The Act demands what they call key requirements from Category 1 and Category 2 responders. The Act requires from both category responders the formation of a local resilience forum based on police areas. The local resilience forums produce the community risk register. But remembering that we are speaking of stakeholder communities, the risks assessed are shifted from safety of the people and property to the corporate stakeholder assets. Life in the Mix uncovered the very secretive forums when investigating a contingency drill in Accrington, Lancashire on October the 23rd, 2009. The drill involved an unknown chemical leak on the back of which they evacuated residents to a very suspect and fully functioning Red Cross processing camp. Hyman Sports Centre, itself owned by a charitable trust called Leisure in Hyman. Here the evacuees faced full medical processing, giving a private trust private medical information. Back at the scene, the fire brigade continued to insist the chemical to be unidentified, which according to health and safety protocol flies in the face of truth. The chemicals being transported are known to the driver on the delivery logs on the chemical containers and on the vehicle itself. And if all that fails, then a call to the company would have the chemical concerned in under five minutes. Consistencies do not end there. The incident is marked as 2:30 p.m. Yet 48 minutes after the, the incident, a call was made to Peel Point Foundation School, demanding the children not be released, and locked the doors, leaving mothers, toddlers, babies, and pregnant mums in the schoolyard to die. Interestingly, the drill took place on the last day of term, giving the school one week before facing concerns from parents. We believe they were testing the reaction of parents after being told their children are not being released from school. 
This is how we approach the subject, and after many, many freedom of information requests, the fire brigade, Lancashire Constabulary, the school itself, and the local resilience forum held in Preston, we were absolutely shocked at the reaction. To get to the point, what basically happened is, after all the flapping and the mucking about and trying to avoid answering questions, what was achieved was to put a Lancashire County Council lawyer in place to act against me, a taxpayer, on behalf of a private corporate entity, Peel Park Foundation School, along with the Resilience Forum, etc. This was an absolutely ridiculous situation and we could hardly believe what was coming back from our investigations. I sent the following FOI request to Lancashire Fire Brigade. Well, why and who determined Hyman Sports Centre as a centre for the evacuated person? From which Red Cross base did the Red Cross staff on scene at Hyman Sports Centre have their origin? Why three minutes before school ended was Peel Park Primary ordered to hold the children in the school when the school is clearly half a mile away from the accident scene? Could you please supply the full CV for Gary Hargreaves and a fuller account of his power in this type of scenario as he played out that power in today's event? Could you confirm or not the role played, if any, by any Capital Simmons personnel directly or indirectly? That request received this response. Thank you for your inquiry. Unfortunately, Station Manager Monk is on leave this week and therefore is unable to answer your questions. He will respond as soon as possible on his return. Thank you, I'm in Fire Station. And that was sent on the 27th of October, 2009. On the 28th of October, I received a second response from the fire service, which said, We have now received your freedom of information request. Please expect a response in some capacity by no later than the 20th of November, 2009. When discovered the existence of the Resilience Forum, I sent this request. Can you please supply a copy of the entire Lancashire Resilience Forum staff with relevant companies, charitable organisations, government departments to which each member is employed or connected? Can you please supply the full minutes of all LRF meetings since 2004? Can you please supply all information relating to all changes in the pipeline for the Lancashire LRF? Can you please supply the incident report in full relating to the chemical spillage on Friday the 23rd of October on Burnley Road, Accrington, including all personnel involved on scene and in the administration of the event? The local resilience forum responded with, I wonder if it would be possible for you to ring me to discuss the FOI request. Thanks. It was signed off Head of Emergency Planning, Lancashire County Council. This was delivered on Thursday the 29th of October 2009. I received a second response from the Local Resilience Forum stating, I refer to your email and caught our conversation on Thursday the 29th of October 2009. I am acknowledging receipt of your request. I am taking advice on how to progress with your request and you will be contacted in due course. Thank you, the County Emergency Planning Office. The final response from the Local Resilience Forum came on the 16th of November 2009. It said, As Chair of the Lancashire Resilience Forum Group, I have been made aware of your Freedom of Information Act request for a number of documents via the LRF. Having considered legal advice, I have been informed that the Lancashire LRF is not a public authority and is therefore not bound by the terms of the Freedom of Information Act to provide the information you require. May I suggest that you direct such requests to the particular agencies or organisations concerned who will be happy to assist you. And this is signed off by Superintendent Old Dwyer, Operations Manager, 8th Division. So it's not a public body, but a public servant is chairing the forum. Now that is dubious by any account. And so back we come to the original question. Who does the Freedom of Information Act? Sir. So under the suggestion by the LRF that we direct these questions to bodies concerned, I sent an FOI to Lancashire Constabulary. Under direction from the Lancashire Resilience Forum, I made a Freedom of Information request direct to Lancashire Police, specifically Superintendent O'Dwyer. I asked, given the Lancashire Police are still a public body, could you please supply me with the following information? If you are the chair of the LRF, then the fact you are a public servant would question the idea the LRF are not indeed a public authority. Could you please supply the relevant information on which your advice is based? Could you please supply the name of the body and personnel from which you, Peter O'Dwyer, Superintendent of Lancashire Police, received your advice? Could you please supply a copy of the advice you received which gives the LRF 
the ability to date policy to Lancashire Politic while immune from FOI. Could you please supply the exact title and role of the LRF and why sitting atop the LRF is a public servant? Could I ask your understanding as the Chief Superintendent of the term misprision of treason and actual legal or lawful meaning of the term? To say we were given the runaround by Lancashire Constabulary would indeed be an understatement. Only following a letter from the Information Commissioner's Office where they readdressed the initial FOI request from this office were we to receive a final response from Lancashire Constabulary. Upon receipt of the FOI requests again via the Information Commissioner Office, the police responded, the panel notes the original request was forwarded to this office following referral from the Information Commissioner, following which a prompt response was provided. The panel has considered the original request, which is as follows, and they reiterate the original FOI request. The response continued, the panel has further considered the contents of your email of the 16th of May and considers as follows. As per the previous response, the Freedom of Information Act states which public bodies are subject to the requirements of the Act and the links to the relevant sections and advice on these provisions has previously been provided. As highlighted previously, advice on the status of the LRF was received from both the Constabulary and Lancashire County Council. The advice was provided from this office and the appropriate office from the County Council. The LRF is not a private body, but a statutory body created by the Civil Contingencies Act 2004. The previous response provided you with the appropriate web link to the LRF, which contains information on its status. As such, the constabulary is under no obligation to provide the information because it is already in the public domain, therefore engaging the exemption under section 21. Having collected the information as the investigation continued, we presented the story on our then website. I then created a leaflet with links to the investigation and duly handed out the leaflets to all parents waiting to pick up their children in all three yards at Peel Park School on November the 10th, 2009. The head and deputy head did not like this and I received the following response from the governors under direction from Lancashire County Council Solicitor Lynn Brewer. Please note that I have been contacted by the above school specifically with regard to the matter of your behaviour. I am advised that you came to the school on the afternoon of the 9th of November with the sole purpose of distributing leaflets among parents designed to cause alarm and distress. When approached by a member of staff who challenged you on the basis that you were not known to the school, you refused to identify yourself or cease handing out the materials. The head teacher was eventually called to speak to you and during this conversation you frequently had to be reminded about your aggressive tone. I am told that the school has since received complaints from concerned parents who claim that you were aggressive and intimidating towards them. Such behaviour on your part is wholly unacceptable and will not be tolerated by the school or the LEA. I am therefore writing to formally notify you that with immediate effect you are no longer permitted to come on the premises of the school. This prohibition will continue until further notice. You are only permitted to attend at the school for the purpose of pre-arranged meeting. If you should wish to arrange such a meeting, you must telephone the school office in order to do so. Please note that should you come onto the school premises without express permission to do so, then you will be trespassing and will be liable to arrest. Trespass on school property causing a nuisance or disturbance is a criminal offence under the terms of Section 547 of the Education Act 1996. The maximum penalty for this offence is currently a fine of £500. In an attempt now to cut this tale short, I demanded written statements from the head and the deputy head to the effect I was aggressive, and for statements parents had complained of the same. To this day none have been forthcoming, with the deputy taking early retirement. This I will take to the courts in due course. I correlated the investigation and sent it to the Information Commissioner's Office, the head of the Data and Information Acts. I sent this on March the 15th, 2010. The ICO, in order to put me off, made me send, resend, reorganise how I sent the information over a period of some two weeks. They then played for time to ensure their response came back during the summer break of 2010. The ICO backed all concerned, save for little old me. I received none of the missing information as they protected everything corporate, Contingency Act 2004. The Freedom of Information Act serves the corporate against the taxpayers as this investigation clearly showed. Though what has been presented so far in this report, as damning as it is, the report is actually about the Freedom of Information Act and what it actually serves. 
I will now further this report by presenting a very recent FOI exercise which explains further the use of Section 21 to prevent corporate data being seen by taxpayer eyes. In an ongoing investigation into the Housing Association, Hyben Homes, a subsidiary of the giant stakeholder Symphony Group, I requested the contract and tender documents to verify they have upkept the contract parameters relating to the handover of the housing stock. Hyben Council, as revealed in two previous videos, is in fact a private corporation named Globe Enterprises. Let us see for whom they act. I sent the following request to Hyman Council on the 22nd of September 2011. Dear team, can you please provide a copy of the tender and contract under which the handover of the housing stock within the boundary of Hyman awarded to the Trust Hyman Homes? Can you please provide a copy of the legal framework governing the handover? And can you please provide information which shows the framework as to the hierarchical grouping acting as watchdog ensuring the contract terms are upheld by Hyman Homes? Then receive the following. The information you have requested in relation to the tender documentation is no longer available as it has been disposed of. The Council does hold a copy of the contract documentation, but as there are 270 pages contained within the contract, there will be a disbursement cost before the Council can release the information. The sum required will be £27, and if you still like this information, you have up to three months to pay the fee, and on receipt of this fee, I will process your request. I then received another response from the Council. It has been brought to my attention that the information you have requested in relation to obtaining a copy of the Housing Stock Transfer Agreement is publicly accessible on the Land Registry website and therefore this email constitutes a refusal notice on the grounds of Section 21. Hmm. However, this does mean that you will be able to access the information at a lesser cost. The Land Registry do charge for seeing a document but is likely to be less than the cost of the Council supplying the information. Here lies the problem. Documents presented elsewhere whatever the issue are edited to the point the real information is redacted. It's not there. Therefore the documents are incomplete. We found this to be the case regarding all corporate contracts and framework agreements. With that in mind I sent the following demand. Can you pass this email on to the Head of Legal and Democratic Services? This is not a request under FOI, this is a demand by a taxpayer to receive the housing stock transfer agreement from your office for the fee of £27 as presented by your FOI coordinator. I received the following response. I have been advised by our legal department that even though the information you requested is available publicly, the council will still provide you with a photocopy of the transfer agreement as you requested. This has now been done and is available for your collection from the Cannon Street reception. The cost of the document is £20, payment in cash as initially agreed, as some pages have been extracted or redacted as it contains confidential information and subject to exemption under the Freedom of Information Act 2000 under the following sections, section 41, 42 and 43. Regards, FOI Coordinator. So what are we to make of the Freedom of Information Act? Using the Act itself to gain information as a taxpayer you have a right to see anyway is limited by the use of the Act. It would appear a demand as a taxpayer would be the better option when requesting information from any and all public bodies. Request information making clear it is not a freedom of information request, just a request from the taxpayer. When it comes to the school, take note of the aim of the corporate state is to take power of attorney over your children away from you the parents and unto the corporations. Retract all medical permissions in the school parent partnership agreement, or you have given your consent for the schools to act as they are directed from the stakeholder community big guns, aka the ASDA, Tesco, Express Gives, Globe Enterprises, or whichever big corporate body is representative in your designated community. 